Uh, Steve is the older man by five years. So he definitely need to go out and establish himself early and win this championship. You don't know if you're going to get a next opportunity. Here's round number one, scheduled for 12. The IBF Cruiserweight Championship on the line. And this should be a contrast of styles as we see Vladarchek come out strongly, firing lefts and rights. And you can see the reach advantage, even though they were both listed at 6-1. Cunningham appears to be the taller fighter. And he's good at fighting from long range, Glenn. Yeah, definitely. Um, Steve's kind of using his jab. And, you know, I, I, I thought it was going to be the reverse where Steve's trying to bring it to this guy. But Steve is actually being the boxer. The left hand finds a sh shot to the chin, getting home by Vladarchek. Cunningham counters with a combination to the body. The Diablo the, the is certainly taking this fight like he's trying to get Steve out of here. Both these guys have been hungry for this title shot for a long time. Cunningham was stiffed a few times. Had a mandatory setup. Couldn't get a fight for about a year. Trying to stay busy in the gym from the great fighting city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And you see the hand speed of Cunningham. Very impressive here in yeah. round number one. Certainly. I, I, I like the fight that he's using his jab. This guy is kind of crowding him. He's trying to stalk him. And he's using the jab. He's stepping around. Throw a right hand. That's kind of throwing him off balance a little bit. Right nearly close to the head of Cunningham. And Cunningham able to get away, showing good head movement, good footwork so far, but Vladarchik trying to put pressure on here in the first round. Not much of a feeling out process here as they engage for the IBF championship. Not at all. I mean, you know, these guys, they're seasoned fighters. They've been in a lot of fights. They are realized they're not going to waste any time and feel each other out. They're trying to get championship. For a lanky, tall fighter, Cunningham appears to be extremely strong in the upper body. Vladarchek got a left hand home that backed up Cunningham briefly, but he fires right back with a couple of jabs. He's aiming that jab right in the middle of the chest, which is a good piece of advice early on in the fight. Yeah, certainly. He's using his jab nicely, using it to the body, using it to the head. He's just throwing himself off balance a few times when he threw that right hand because he leaned down to the left side with that right hand. I don't particularly care for that. I, I would like to see him lean, but not so far away. Quick right hand in behind the jab by Cunningham that time. Scores as Vladarchek tries to cut the ring off and backs up Cunningham against the ropes. Not much damage done in that exchange. Cunningham comes out firing once again. Inside 20 seconds to go. Round number one. Looks like it's going to be a good one. Good contrasting styles. Making for a good fight here. A tough round to score here to open things up, man. Yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, the way how I see it, neither guy take charge of the fight. They're still just doing what they have to do to establish themselves. I would say this one an even round. I'll go ahead and give that one to Cunningham. He was a little bit more relentless throughout, trying to establish uh, his hand speed and his footwork. I thought Vladarchek got in a couple of good heavy shots and just a question of taste as we look at a replay of whether you prefer and you see that that's left what hand I don't back like Cunningham yeah the right hand where he leans away throw that right hand that's what I don't like because it brings too much weight to one side of his body and keep throwing him off balance especially when you get hit Darchek landed fewer punches in that round but perhaps the more effective ones and Cunningham did establish his speed and his ability to move around the ring his maneuverability and also established a pretty good jab yeah, certainly. You know, these guys are experienced fighter, good quality fighting. And um, looking forward to the second round. It should be an exciting fight. Great matchup between the two guys. Good skills. They are even, even grounds. This round two, scheduled for 12. IBF Cruiserweight Championship, which is vacant right now. It's going to be filled by one of these two warriors in the ring. But they are check, pressing the action and pressing forward. And Cunningham once again showing us his good footwork and his quick jab. For a guy with 10 knockouts from 19 wins, Cunningham does appear to have some power and some upper body strength. Man. Yeah, Cunningham is trying to establish himself using the jab. He's certainly the boxer of the two. He's, he's trying to land body shots, which is always a good idea. This guy is stalking him. He's a little bit stronger, and he's, he's trying to take over discouraging by just staying close 
but Cunningham is doing the right thing by getting space with his legs and using the jab. He's going to have to keep that distance to keep Podarczyk off him and avoid that pressure punching. Podarczyk's punches all appear to have some steam. But Cunningham doing a good job of showing Vladarchek a lot of different angles for the taller fighter. Yeah, certainly. He's, he's, he's not being a stationary target. He's moving around. He's throwing punches. You know, and, and, and this is a good thing about a guy moving backwards and, 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 and using his hands at the same time. It's great boxing skills. Pace was very fast in round number one. Starting to click in here in the second round. Scheduled for 12. Yeah, this is a better round for Steve. He established the distance. He's taking control of this front round, kind of taking control of the fight, kind of have Diablo where he wants him at the end of his punches, and he's throwing combination and step back. Not necessarily landing. He might need to cut down the distance between himself and Vladarczyk as he's in a defensive posture to a degree and yet trying to establish his offense here in the early going. Good right hand oh, that time. Just missed. Nice. A nice follow-up nice to end that exchange. By Cunningham. Darczyk continues to press. As Cunningham in an awkward position. And Cunningham wisely shown his ring experience. Holds on. Uh, he's punching on the break. Tony Weeks the third man in the ring. From the United States of America. Cunningham again with the jab. Tough to keep these guys. That come forward constantly off you. Yeah, certainly. I mean, if you let the guy come forward and don't get any result when he gets there, like he's doing here, he's tying him up. He's making himself small, you know, take away punching room when he get close and then establish a distance again, go back to the job and straight right hands. Coming towards the end of round number two thus far, a good round for Steve USS Cunningham, but as I say that, he gets nailed by a shot by Vladarczyk and then counters back with a right hand of his own. Yeah, certainly. This is a good exchange at the end of the round. The battle line's clearly established as we come to the close of round number two. Good round overall for Steve USS Cunningham. Yeah, certainly. I believe he won that round. He established himself a little bit better in this round. Hometown hero, Christoph Ladarczyk. The judges hail from Germany, one from Poland and one from the United States of America. Rich Cicchetti in the corner. Rich has been around a long time. You see some action here from round number two. And the finishing blows by Vladarczyk may be the more telling of the punches that have been landed so far. Yeah, certainly. Cunningham is, 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 is giving, you know, he's creating space, which is what he want to do because he's throw a little bit wider punches. He don't throw them as crisp as I would like to see him throw them, but he's getting the, he's getting the job done. I believe he won the last round. And we see what the third round have. I have Cunningham up two rounds and nothing so far. That first one, as you said, Glenn, could have been a toss-up. You scored it even. But a difficult task for Cunningham is if it does go to the scorecards, he's going to have to be extremely impressive to win over the judges in Vladarczyk's hometown of Warsaw. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the thing about fighting in a guy hometown, anything the guy do, the crown reacts. And sometimes the judges... They get influenced by that. You gotta get down. You gotta stay down. Stay Tony down. Weeks uh, telling the corner people of Ladarchek to get off the ring apron. That could cause a disqualification, actually, while the round's in progress. Well, certainly, in the IBF rules, if you get under ring opening, the, the fight is over. So they gotta be careful what they're doing over there. It's a warning from Tony Weeks. The right hand, meanwhile, lands to the body by Steve USS Cunningham, who's dictating the pace of this fight with his hand and foot speed. Yeah, definitely. Steve is moving around nicely. See him tie up there. And it, he's able to tie the guy up and, and smugly shot. And get distance again. So he's, John Chek uh, willing to walk through some of these punches, though, trying to land a home run ball. Well, Don Big Chek, right hand, yeah, it. definitely. You know, Don Chek is a guy that want to fight in close, you know. So you got to keep the distance. So long as you have distance between him, and, and Cunningham, he's uncomfortable. He's not going to throw that many punches. Cunningham appearing to pick up confidence as his bout is making its way to the midway point of round number three. Fighting with a little bit more bravado and throwing some accurate punches. That lead right hand has been especially effective for him. Right? Yes, certainly. As soon as the guy step in, step in too close, you're giving the right hand and time up. 
And he's able to win the exchanges and then move away. Showing a lot of ring savvy so far and ring generalship is Steve USS Cunningham. He's certainly the guy, he come in with a game plan and he's following it through. The stoppage, tape on the gloves perhaps? Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. And again, the lead right hand by Cunningham to open the exchange. Doing a good job of tying up Ladarchek when they get inside and continues to throw punches, which is something that sometimes boxers forget to do. Yeah, certainly. You know, he's, 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 he's a weaker guy on the inside. So once they get on the inside, he tie him up, walk him forward, and, and get some distance and then establish himself again. If he's fighting a smart fight, he's fighting what he do. He's, he's following his, his game plan. A nail by a left hook that time by Ladarchik to the delight of the Warsaw crowd. In on the infighting, Cunningham wisely tying up. And Vladarchek trying to find punch in him, and when he does, he has a hammer. That was a sledgehammer left hand that he just about got in, grazed the chin of Steve Cunningham. Yeah, he's, he's a strong guy. You see how he's throwing some serious punches, but not throwing enough of them. Uh, when you have distance like they do now, he don't do anything. Ten seconds to go, round number three. Another apparently good round for Steve USS Cunningham. And at the bell, a vicious exchange, but... Steve Cunningham executing his game plan nearly to perfection so far and able to ward off the pressing attack of Christoph Ladarchik. Yes, yeah, certainly. I like I like what um, Cunningham is doing. He's fighting on the outside and tying him up when he tying him up when he get too close where he's uncomfortable and get separation again and go back to the job and try to throw the overhand right. You see the combination work of Steve USS Cunningham. Darcek with good short hooks, both right and left-handed, trying to close out that exchange and do some damage. Wasn't able to really land that shot right on the chin of USS Cunningham. I, I gave that round to Steve Cunningham. I, I think he's doing a good job so far, establishing the pace of the fight, keeping Vladarchek off him uh, while landing effective combinations. Yeah, certainly. I have two rounds for Cunningham and one round even. Um, we'll see what happened in the fourth round. This one's scheduled for 12. The vacant IBF Cruiserweight Championship on the line. Steve Cunningham again with a fast pace to open up round number four. And that lead right hand, he's starting to throw it with a little bit more of the bad intentions that Mike Tyson used to use. <laughs> Going in combination, tries an uppercut up the middle and dancing away from the danger zone of Vladarchek's power. If there's been a knock on Vladarchek through his career and he's been in against some tough European fighters, People say that he's a little bit too deliberate, that he needs to let his hands go with a bit more frequency and not be so careful to try and pick his spot. Yeah, certainly you can see him fighting a careful fight here. You know, he, he only he only throw punches when he's at a certain distance. He doesn't throw punches when he get in range, when he can't throw punches. He just throw punches only when he's leaning, when he's touching on you. And interestingly, it's Cunningham that's using some good body work in the early stages of this fight. You would think Vladarchek would be compelled to try and go to the body of Cunningham, slow him down a little bit, and maybe cut the distance and be able to get inside, land some big blow. Yeah, well, he, he's, he's, he's just trying to catch Cunningham in between punches. He's not trying to extra, he's not trying to take any, take control of the fight. He's not, he's, he's not trying to be the, the man that dictate the round. He's trying to be a counter puncher. Just and he like is there, that. effectively. Yeah, definitely. That's a good punch right there. short left hand inside. As you said, Glenn, he has a tremendous advantage when the two guys get inside. And Cunningham, obviously aware of that, continues to try and tie up every time they come together. Yeah, that would be a smart way to do it. You know, you have a guy that only punches at a certain distance. When you get in that distance, you want to interrupt him. Can one shot like that win you around? If it doesn't necessarily buckle or rock the guy? Because Cunningham so far has thrown a tremendous volume of punches. Yeah, well, certainly all depends on who's judging the fight. I mean, again, you know, when you're fighting a guy hometown and the crowd reacts to everything you do, sometimes the judges get influenced, and that's why you got to take control of the fight when you're fighting overseas. Inside a minute to go, round number four. Pattern in this fight has been established early on. Cunningham using his range, using his hand speed, and moving around the ring. Doing a good job of keeping... 
Kristoff Ladarczyk off him. Ladarczyk occasionally with some spectacular stuff on the inside. Yes, yeah, certainly. Cunningham is doing the work. He's winning the fight so far. Throw a little low blow right there. And this guy only want to try and close the round to impress the judges. He's not doing the work he should do throughout the round. Cunningham he, continuing to change angles and now effective with short punches on the inside. Weeks warning Cunningham not to get over enthusiastic about it and coming out of the breaks. And there's the end of round number four. Another good round though for Steve USS Cunningham. Definitely. Um, I think Steve won that round. He, he did the work in the round. He established himself. And, um, you know, he's, the other guy is not doing anything. He's just basically just trying to stifle right there. He throws some inside shots. Nice uppercut that missed from Cunningham right there. Good uppercut that land right there. So Cunningham throwing and landing the better punches. So far, a boxing lesson. As uh, I've got Cunningham winning all four rounds so far. I think you have it, Glenn, 3 0 and 1 even. Yeah, I have the first round even. Uh, and I have Cunningham winning three rounds. So it's, um, it's, it's an interesting fight. Cunningham is winning the fight so far. He's doing the work, and I'm rewarding him. Kiketi, very calm in the corner that you see on the left side of your screen with his instructions to Steve Cunningham. Has to feel that however schooled Cunningham is coming into this fight in terms of strategy, he's following it perfectly so, so far. Round five, scheduled for 12. Ladarczyk, a little bit more urgency in his corner as they try to implore their fighter to come forward and maybe start landing some combinations. Well, he's coming forward, but he's not throwing the punches. And um, that's why that's what has him down so far. Um, Cunningham is doing a very good job of throwing at the distance where uh, he's comfortable and the other guy is uncomfortable. Darczak tasting some leather as he tries to get in those power shots. A couple of good right hands so far in this round by Ladarczyk. And that one could have been especially dangerous, Glenn, as for a rare change, Cunningham left himself wide open to that right hand. Yes, the jabs certainly. now backs up Cunningham. Good punches, a nice exchange between both the guys right there on the ropes. Cunningham won't allow Ladarczyk to put too much pressure on him, though, and now he backs up Ladarczyk. I would really like to see him do more of that. You know, step to Darczyk and, and, and throw a combination and get him to back up. Against the ropes, not necessarily the territory that Cunningham wants to be. You'd have to think this is Ladarczyk's fight, and now Cunningham turns him around. Nice little arm punch uppercut <laughs> on the right side there by Cunningham. That's interesting. He's been able to land some wide shots, Cunningham. Some short punches inside, and the uppercut's been effective, but you see the power hand. of Ladarczyk as he yeah. stuns Cunningham briefly here at the midway point of round number five. Cunningham shaking it off. We're throwing that lead right hand quite frequently so far through the fight. Oh, but if you look at Cunningham where he's carrying his left hand, you know, he's open for lead right hand all day. He just, just got to get in position and throw that punch. So Darczyk pressing forward again. Nice to back up Cunningham against the ropes. Grazing right hand got through and not much else. Minute to go, round number five. Impressed with the style of Steve USS Cunningham so far. Showing us a lot of versatility in his boxing ability. Yeah, certainly. I just would prefer to see him pay a little more attention when he get close. Because, you know, you have Diablo throwing a few punches in there and landing because he's being careless. Nice body shot. Just have to wonder if Cunningham can run out of gas in the later rounds of this fight. It's been a lightning quick pace set by Steve USS Cunningham so far. Thundering body shot that time by Ladarczyk. Yeah, Ladarczyk is throwing strong punches. It's just like to see him throw more of them. You know, he's he's getting tied up by Cunningham when he gets close, and he's not throwing. He's not being busy enough for me. He hasn't really gone to the jab very often to try and work his way underneath this reach advantage that Cunningham has been enjoying throughout the fight. Good left hand that time gets through, and a short uppercut on the inside to close out the round. Perhaps enough to impress the judges. Yeah, certainly impressed me with that closing, so I'm going to give him that round. He did a little better work in that in that round, and I will, will, will reward him for that. Looked like some of the gas was off the punches, the punching power of Steve USS Cunningham, as we mentioned. Not necessarily a huge puncher, and you see Vladarczyk very clever on the inside. 
Yeah, yeah certainly. And Steve, now he's starting to be a little more stationary. He's not moving quite as much as he was, getting different angles and punching. So, you know, Darcek is able to, um, to close the gap and throw little punches on the inside. Might have been a turning point for Vladarchek in round number five as he finally caught up with Steve USS Cunningham, who's doing a great job in the first four rounds of the fight, keeping Vladarchek off him, keeping him at bay with the jab. Coming up, round number six. Certainly, he has to keep establishing himself with the jab and show different angles to keep um, um, Vladarchek off of him. Steve Cunningham, the red trunks, white trim. And the colors of the U.S. of A. with the stars on his trunks. Christoph Ladarczyk in the dark blue trunks with the white trim. Round number six, scheduled for 12. Vacant IBF Cruiserweight Championship at stake. Cunningham been waiting for this opportunity for the better side of a year. Saw a couple of fights fall out on him as he wanted to contend for the championship. He was the mandatory number one contender in the IBF. Ladarczyk comes in ranked number two and now comes forward with a big left hand. Trying to make a statement here in the middle rounds of this fight. Yes, yeah, certainly. He's closing the gap. He's getting where he's a little bit better comfortable um, punching. He's lining a few punches. And Cunningham is allowing him to close that gap because he's not busy enough. Well, the early pace of Steve Cunningham come back to haunt him later on in this fight. That's the magic question right now as you get into the middle rounds. And some of that trench work that Goes a long way towards deciding who's going to walk away with the title. Yeah, definitely. I like I like when he try to turn his shoulder in the on the inside and get a couple of punches on the inside. I tie the guy up, take away punching room from him. Left-handed uppercut by Steve USS Cunningham countering off the ropes as we saw Ladarchek just posing in front of him, another knock on his style, and not throwing any punches. Yeah, certainly nice overhand right. Roundhouse shot. You can see who has the punching power. It's clearly Vladarchek as he goes to the body now and finally doubles up on that left hook. Yeah, he's landing punches now. He's um, getting closer to Steve and he's landing up some nice shots in this round. Starting to get the sense this is going to be a good one. If it hasn't been already. Good fast pace in this fight. Vladarchek starting to come on. Final minute, round number six of this scheduled 12 rounder. Cunningham not as busy with the footwork, although he does rock it out of the corner with a nice combination. Well, he's missing a lot of punches now. You know, he's throwing, he's throwing it off mark, and that's a sign of fatigue setting in. He's not as accurate as he once in the early rounds. Making it a little easier for Vladarczyk to counter. And Tony Weeks separates the fighters after the clinch in the center of the ring. And Cunningham trying to reestablish the jab. We come inside the final 30 seconds of round number six. Ladarchek right coming hand. on and pressing him in the corner. And you can see a little confidence boost in Ladarchek, Glenn. The body language is definitely picking up as Ladarchek is starting to find a home for those short lefts and rights. Yeah, certainly. I mean, he's coming with a game plan, and his game plan is working better for him now. And he has to have a lot of confidence coming off of that round. Another round I will give to him. And I also gave that round of Ladarchek. You get to see some action from round number six. We're at the midway point of this title fight for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship. And a strong left hand got through. Cunningham acknowledges you hit me with a good shot on that one. And nice right hand over the top. Up. You're looking crowd on hand tonight. Yeah, certainly, and we have a king in the audience, so that's always exciting. Always good to see royalty ringside. <laughs> mixed in with the hot babes as well. Uh, it's you get a look at the respective exciting. corners simultaneously. Vladarchek now looking a little bit more calm in his corner, and there appears to be less desperation in terms of the instructions he's being given. And Steve USS Cunningham exhibiting the tendencies of a solid pro, still very calm. I think he knows last couple of rounds were not his best. And We'll see if he can reestablish the pace here in round number seven, past the midway point. Certainly, he need to come out, use his leg, establish his jab and right hand behind it. A little more accuracy. You always wonder when you see a boxer puncher like Steve USS Cunningham after he sets a very torrid pace early in the fight and then finds his opponent starting to catch up with him, if he's going to be able to find a second win and reestablish himself and be able to 
show that same ring movement and generalship that worked so well for him in the first four rounds. Well, you know, one of the things that he has to do, he has to calm himself down and kind of go back and focus on what was working earlier in the fight and try to focus on that and go back and capture that and establish himself again. You can see the distance closing as Ladarczyk continues to pour in with big, heavy hooks, both left and right-handed, and suddenly Cunningham's jab is not landing as frequently, and that was very effective for him early. Yeah, well, definitely. You know, he's throwing a lot of hard punches, and you don't have to throw every punch hard. You could throw some punches set up. You throw a nice body shot there. But, uh, you know, you could use this jab in, in situations like this. He should be using this jab and trying to set up right hands. You can't blame Cunningham if the pace slows a little bit as uh, boxers take a little bit of a breather, but no such luck for Cunningham. He gets nailed with a right hand. Neither fighter has been down in this fight. Neither fighter appears to be marked. There's a lot of good shots to land, but, um, you know, you always land with the guy going away, you know, no, no punch land with the guy with the kind of impact where both guys stepping into it. The dart check was strong early and looks like he might be getting stronger as the fight moves on. As he land a good body shot in the corner. Cunningham does not belong on the ropes. Every time he's been on the ropes, with rare exception, he's found himself on the short end of the exchange. A quick left hook on the inside, also outstanding by Christoph Ladarche. Well, you know, these are two season pros fighting for the championship. There's a lot of good things going on there. Um, but, you know, these guys, after watching this fight at the end of the night, they're going to look at things that they can do better. Ladarche showing a little bit more of a contemporary American style than the standard European style that you normally see, Glenn where a guy just stands squared up right in front of his opponent. He could ill afford to do that against a guy with the hand speed and the movement of Cunningham, but I'm impressed with the way he's composed himself, Ladarczyk, in his fight. Yeah, certainly. You know, he's keeping his hands up. He's using his legs to get in position and uh, get where he's comfortable and start punching. And he's, he's doing a good job of it. He's throwing shots to the head, shots to the body. And... Um, Cunningham was, was, was tying him up, but he's not doing such a good job tying him up now. He's tying him up, but he's keep, keeping him, keep a hand loose and a hand free where he could use it on his landing shot with, the, with that hand. There's the bell in round number seven, and the pattern of this fight has changed dramatically from the early rounds. I thought Cunningham dominated the first four rounds of this fight. Probably could have found one that he would have given to Vladarczyk. We get a look at a replay of action in the corner, and Vladarczyk left hand the first one got home second one missed and he's very quick on the inside also giving Cunningham some difficult angles to work with. The certain he's moving his head now when he gets to the inside and he's looking for punches he's not the target that he once was in the early rounds he's moving his head around uh, while he's looking for shots he's getting in position where he would very like the punch and Cunningham is not keeping him off with the jab and tying him up when he get close he's not doing a good job of tying him up when he's on the inside. Speaking of getting close, if I get close on my scorecard, I gave Ladarczyk the last three rounds after Cunningham swept the first four on my card. Here we come with round number eight, and there's the bell. Get into the championship rounds pretty soon, Glenn Johnson. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, that's the rounds that are gonna establish who is the champion between the two guys. Cunningham busy here to open up round number eight. Yeah, these guys are um, keeping the they're keeping the pressure on. They um, you know, they're moving their hands a lot. Uh, and that's why a lot of people, it's surprising, haven't embraced the cruiserweight division. You're seeing some excellent speed, some good footwork, a good quick pace. Guys that can punch, and these guys both go about 190 pounds. So it's not as if they're small fries in there. No, these guys are good fighters. Good uppercut shot right there by Cunningham. It's been a steady pattern through the middle rounds. Vladarczyk coming forward. Cunningham trying to avoid being on the ropes. When he does get backed up against the ropes, he usually ends up on the short end of the exchange. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you want to establish himself with distance and, um, you know, establish the job. When the guy gets inside, hold him and walk him back. So, he, you know, he don't, he, he don't get to throw those short punches on the inside. Vladarczyk coming forward with less impunity than he was earlier in the fight. Maybe sensing that Cunningham's power has leveled off a little bit. 
as we mentioned, Cunningham never known as a huge puncher and good short, good short shots, right shots left combination. Inside. Yeah, it's good inside work by Vladarchi. Yeah, I like it. Cunningham nice. from the famous boxing city of Philadelphia, PA, city of brotherly love. Joe Frazier, Bernard Hopkins, Matthew Saad Muhammad, a lot of great fighters out of Philly. Oh, yeah, that's a fighting town right there. When you hear a guy coming out of Philly, no matter what his record is, you know he's a fighter. And as is true with a lot of the great Mexican fighters, usually heart of a warrior. Oh, so Out of Philadelphia. You don't see a lot of Philly fighters quitting in the ring. No, not at all. I mean, the sparring that you get in, 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 in Philadelphia is um, better than any fight you will see anywhere. And Vladarchek nailing Cunningham in the corner. Nothing too telling. I don't think Cunningham, except for that one shot in about the fifth round, has felt too much of the power of Vladarchek. Hasn't been stunned, hasn't been wobbled. Uh, neither guy is being wobbled. Uh, they certainly good shots land from both sides of the defense, but no serious damage between the two. Um, Diablo is certainly establishing himself, his style of fighting, a little bit more now in the later rounds. And Cunningham has abandoned that uppercut that was working for him early. We haven't seen any of those in the last three or four rounds. As we get into a little bit more of a wrestling match here in the closing seconds of round number eight. Again, the feint and no punches from Vladarchek, but he does get home a short right, a left hand. There's the bell, end of round eight. Another interesting round. This matchup for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship of the World. That was a tough round to score. Certainly was. You can see where a lot of these rounds uh, would be debatable on anybody's scorecard, depending on what angle you had in the ring. You see Cunningham doing some good work there with the combination, and then the short inside punching skills of Vladarchek. Maybe nice enough uppercut, to give him yeah. the round. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I, I would give the, the, this round like I did. The eighth round, I gave it to um, Ludacek. Uh, Cunningham certainly not doing the work that uh, he was doing earlier on. And, um, you know, it seems like it's, uh, it's, uh, the, everything is even up right about now. Some difficult rounds to score. And if this one does go to the scorecards, it could be a real challenge. As yeah, we're getting set for round number nine. Certainly, this fight is um, is a close fight. Round so nine, scheduled for 12. IBF Cruiserweight Championship on the line here in Warsaw, Poland. Jeff DeFore is along with the Road Warrior, who certainly knows about going to the pencil. Sometimes that can be the hardest blow to take <laughs> <laughs> when you're traveling certainly. to try and win a championship, as we have... Steve USS Cunningham, who's traveled across the world to take on the hometown favorite, Christoph Vladarchek. Early rounds, all Cunningham, in my opinion. And the middle rounds, perhaps swept by Vladarchek on the scorecards. Vladarchek is closing the gap now. He's getting a little bit more comfortable in his, in his fight style. And he's certainly um, doing a good job. The criticisms uh, in the bios of Vladarchek appear to have been valid. He, he cuts the distance down, and he has a tendency to just pose a little bit instead of throwing punches. If he let his hands go more frequently, he might be dominating on the scorecards, especially through the middle rounds of the fight since round five when he changed the pace a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, there's one thing Cunningham is missing in his arsenal is short punches. You know, he's throw everything long. Everything is a, is a wide punch. And um, his short punches is missing, and that's what he was able to catch um, the, the, the Ablo when, when he's on the inside posing. He was able to th throw a lot of inside and short shots and land those punches. And surprisingly, as Vladarchek has been trying to cut down the distance, Cunningham is finding himself missing and out of range when he goes on the offensive. But a good fight so far, almost dead even in our opinion. Vladarchek, same pattern. This has almost been a mirror image of the action since round number one. Pace has slowed perhaps just a little bit, but Vladarchek trying to back up Cunningham against the ropes and then get inside and do some damage. Yeah, Steve is throwing those punches, but like you say, he's missing the shots. And Diablo, he's not, he's not really landing a lot of punches, but the few that he's throwing, he's landing them. And that's the difference in the fight. Volume of punches by Vladarchek, not necessarily there, but some effective inside shots might be the telling blows in this fight. 
Cunningham doesn't appear, Glenn, and you'd probably be a great judge of this to have found his second wind at this point, which I think he's going to need as Weeks breaks him up. And once again, we have Ladarchek coming to the corner. Lost his mouthpiece yeah. without necessarily taking a blow. <laughs> Weeks warning that uh, in a close fight, he may take a point away if this happens again. Yeah, definitely, and he should. Final seconds, round number nine, scheduled for 12. And the action slowing him. just a bit. <laughs> See how wide Steve threw that shot to you? know, he just threw a wide uppercut. Oh, oh nice big right uppercut. hand that yeah. time by Steve Cunningham. And in a close round, that could turn out to be the difference. Oh, definitely. Round nine in the book, Steve USS Cunningham who perhaps was seeing this fight slip away on the scorecards, lands a huge hammering right-hand shot right at the bell to end round number nine and maybe steal one. He badly needed Glenn to establish himself again in this fight as he looked so good early. He was doing everything perfectly and then found Vladarczyk trying to catch up with him in the middle rounds and dominating most of those middle stances. And it comes back and maybe that one home run shot in round number nine might be the difference. Yeah, well, there you see it. Yeah, definitely. He's a good shot. But, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for me to give him the round and just, just that one punch. He's missing a lot of punches. He's throwing a lot. But he's not really connecting those punches. And um, Diablo is, is throwing more shots on the inside and landing more. He's throwing fewer punches, but he's landing more punches. Here's round number 10, set for 12. Bacon IBF Cruiserweight Championship is at stake. It was held by O'Neill Give Him Hell Bell. And O'Neill Bell was scheduled to fight a mandatory against Steve USS Cunningham in the States. Had a problem with a tooth and ended up having to cancel and the IBF forcing this matchup after Cunningham also had another bout scheduled for the championship and that one fell out due to an injury to his opponent. And here he is about a year later finally getting his shot. We'll see if he's hungry enough to make it pay off. Travel a long way to try and capture a championship belt. He's unbeaten at 19-0, 10 by way of knockout. The hometown hero, Christoph Ladarczyk, trying to put up enough pressure to deny Cunningham this shot at the title. You just, um, Cunningham, just need to throw shorter punches. He's over-punching, and um, those punches take a lot of energy. And I believe that he's not going to catch his second win like that. He's just going to get more tired and more tired. Both fighters in great condition for this fight. The pace has been swift throughout. And while Vladarczyk isn't throwing a tremendous number of punches, exerting a lot of energy, and these exchanges have been crisp. Halfway through round number 10. Two guys looking for their first championship belt on the world scale. Cunningham perhaps finding a second wind and now starting to land some of those looping punches from the outside. Yeah, there's um, a nice looping right hand he land on the top of the head. And we'd like to see him um, get his jab together. He throwing the jab from, from his knees, basically. And he's gonna, gonna get hit with right hand over the top. It's become apparent that if he can keep Ladarczyk off of him, He's the more effective fighter in the center of the ring. Lazarczyk's big success has come when he's backed up Cunningham into a corner, or Cunningham has allowed himself to be backed up. And then Lazarczyk has been effective with short inside punches, not necessarily in successive combinations, but a left and a right. Maybe he's been enough to win him a few rounds in his fight. Yeah, certainly. I mean, these rounds are close rounds, but the difference is going to be him landing the jab and landing right hand from the outside because um, it's, it's too late for him to learn to throw short punches on the inside in the fight if he didn't already have that in his arsenal. Good job by Cunningham of resurrecting his game plan here in round number 10. Coming back from a series of rounds where he allowed Vladarczyk to be the boss in the center of the ring and, and along the ropes. Good left hand there by Vladarczyk to close it out but another difficult round to score Glenn Johnson. Yeah, definitely. But um, I'm going to give this round to Cunningham because they line a few punches from the outside 
And that's something he haven't been doing for quite a while in this fight. So he's coming back to doing some stuff that he was doing earlier. Championship hanging in the balance perhaps in these final two rounds. If Cunningham looks a little fatigued, he has every right to be. He's been on the go, on the move the entire fight. And you get a look at Ladarchek, who doesn't appear to be any of the worst to wear. Maybe a little bit low on that body shot, but a nice combination by Cunningham. And very close to a clash of heads in there, which could be dangerous at this stage. Yeah, certainly. That's the last thing you want when you're so close to finishing the fight is to get an accidental headbutt and uh, pass a cut. That's not a good feeling knowing that you almost finished the fight. A lot of intrigue as we get into round number 11, scheduled for 12. IBF Cruiserweight Championship of the World at stake. Steve Cunningham, the busier of the two fighters right now in the center of the ring in the red trunks with the USA emblazoned, or USS. And Christoph Ladarchek in the blue trunks. He's been stalking the pace throughout this fight since the opening moments of round number one. Neither fighter down. Neither fighter's been cut or marked. And neither fighter's really been staggered in this fight. Again, Ladarchek, good job on the inside with some counterpunching. As you said, Glenn, Cunningham's hands have been held extremely low, and when he does miss, Ladarchek trying to capitalize. Yeah, and certainly. He tried to throw some short punches there, which is a good thing. That's what been missing in his arsenal throughout this fight. He have the long punches down, but the short punches, he need to work on get those punches where he could um, land those on the inside. A little less spring in the legs of Steve USS Cunningham. Understandable. He's been on the go the entire 10 rounds and change right now. And once again, trying to set the pace of this fight with that left jab. Was effective very much so early on. And then he wasn't nearly as frequent with it in the middle rounds of the fight when Vladarchek perhaps came on. It certainly, you see, he, he did a good thing there. He wasn't comfortable. And he just hold him and walk him back, let the referee break him up, which is a good thing. That's what he want to try and do, walk the guy back and establish his jab and the guy get to the right distance. Vladarchek just 25 years old. Cunningham 30. Surprisingly, Vladarchek has had more matches. A lot of those fought in Europe against some tough European customers. Nice right right Left-right combination there. And Cunningham has no answer for it. Trying to pepper him with body shots, but nothing too effective out of Cunningham's arsenal right now. And that overhand right has been a big weapon for Vladarchek in this fight. Is it enough to win the fight? if it does indeed go to the scorecards. Well, you know, this is a type of fight that you really don't want to have in, in the guy's um, hometown where, you know, it's a close fight and you certainly have the crowd involved in the fight, certainly influence the judges, and um, Cunningham got to certainly start to separate himself from this guy right now if you want to win this fight. Well, if anybody would understand that principle, it's you. The road warrior Glenn Johnson. I know you felt the pain of the pencil many times, uh, especially in the early stages of your career. Yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, it's uh, the crowd is influencing the judges. You want to keep them quiet. Good rally by Cunningham to close out round 11, and yet another difficult round to score. Steve USS Cunningham came out smoking early in round number 11. Vladarchek caught him with a few shots. Later on, and just as it appeared that Cunningham was losing his momentum, he came back on in the final exchange. And you have to ask yourself, was it enough to give him the round? Yeah, well, you know, these rounds are close. They basically toss up. It's all about who you like um, in the fight. But this is not the kind of fight you want to have in the next man hometown. You want to want to establish yourself, for sure. Cunningham appears to win in the fight, but. You get uh, Darchek's corner. Trying to rally their fighter. This one could be hanging in the balance right now. Could be decided in round number 12. I have Cunningham three points ahead in this fight. I gave him the last three rounds after giving him the first four. 
And Vladarchek, I thought, swept the middle rounds, rounds five through eight. Crowd on its feet right now. Round number 12, IBF Cruiserweight Championship at stake. Steve, USS Cunningham, dancing around and throwing that left jab, keeping his hands low. Vladarchek continuing to try and come in and put some steam on those punches and maybe take Cunningham out. Uh, he, he, Steve's throwing a nice little uppercut in the inside, but he got to establish his jab here, separate himself from this guy. Throwing punches from the outside, missing like that is not doing any good. And it would be odd for Cunningham to think that maybe he had this fight in the bag, and that could affect his strategy in round number 12. Although he is attempting to take the action to Vladarchek. Tying him up in the center of the ring. That can be a huge blunder, though, sometimes. Uh, we've seen it go both ways, where a fighter goes out and tries to engage his opponent, even though he has the fight apparently won, and ends up catching some shots and maybe losing a two-point round and losing the title in the balance. Yeah, you don't want to get careless in the last rounds. Um, you know, so when your body is weaker, you're tired, probably dehydrated, you certainly don't want to take a blow. You want to go out there and establish yourself and um, be as careful as you can not to get hit. The combination there by Steve USS Cunningham, the crowd, the chant is Diablo, Diablo, Vladarchek's nickname here in his hometown of Warsaw, Poland. A little more than a minute to go in this fight for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship, and you can sense, Glenn, that the title's on the line, and both guys know it. Yeah, definitely. You know, this has been a close fight throughout the night. Both guys win, win a few rounds here and there, and, um, you know, Diablo is throwing punches on the break and everything. It's not exactly a clean fighter, but he's not extremely dirty either. Both guys showing signs of wear and tear here in round number 12 inside nice the final minute. Uppercut on the inside by Cunningham. And a left hand got home by Vladarchek, but he wasn't able to follow it up. Cunningham doing a good job of tying up Vladarchek in this round and staving off severe damage. And those short, quick punches, maybe enough to impress the judges. He gives a look over to the scorer's table as if to say, I think I have this one. 20 seconds to go. Here in round number 12, this is the final round. Is there a late rally in here from Vladarchek? Not able to cut off the distance. That long jab of Cunningham could be the weapon that brings him a title. We shall see. There's the bell to end round number 12. Good fight all the way through. And I thought round 12 was a good one for Steve USS Cunningham. I think so as well. It's, um, you know, he, he hand around with the jabs. And he'd have um, Diablo stepping back there retreating so that's a good sign I have Cunningham winning this fight 116 112 eight rounds to four I thought Cunningham swept the first four rounds and the last four rounds and I gave maybe generously so Vladarchek trying to sense what the judges might be thinking I gave him all four of the middle rounds but I thought that Cunningham landed more punches more effective overall and while Vladarchek did do some good in the fight on the inside I thought Cunningham won the fight. Road Warrior, you know all about this, uh, the anxiety of waiting for the decision. I think he won the fight, Mr. Ketty has the same opinion as I do, Rich Ketty telling him he won the fight, but as you know, in these close bouts, you had a couple of even rounds. Uh, I thought Cunningham was impressive uh, at the end of this fight. Yeah, I have a couple of even rounds. I, I believe um, Cunningham win the fight. I have round one even. I also have round seven even and round 11 even. But uh, for the most part, uh, Cunningham won more rounds. And I, I, I think Cunningham would win the fight. Just a question of what the judges preferred. He had some good short compact punching by Christoph Vladarchek. He has the advantage of having the crowd behind him. Steve USS Cunningham has been waiting a long, long time for this moment. He's gonna see this one go to the scorecards. One judge from Germany, one judge from Poland, home of Ladarczyk and one judge from the good old U.S. of A. So it could be the German judge that swings this one. A very close fight. Difficult to score some of the rounds. The pace set by Cunningham mostly in the early rounds. Ladarczyk had his moments in the middle rounds. And I thought Cunningham, as we were saying, 
in need of a second win, found their way to reestablish the pace of the fight. He was getting off first, and I think he threw the bigger volume of punches. Neither guy really did any serious damage to the other throughout the distance of this fight. Not at all. You know, they they, they even fighters, even match, and, um, you know, he's, he's a toss-up. I mean, you know, knowing how it is in Europe fighting in the hometown, you have no clue who's going to get the decision, even though Cunningham might win the fight. He's already making speeches, perhaps an indication that he knows something, showing his appreciation for the crowd. And Len, you've been saying it throughout the broadcast. The European crowd is about as polite as I've ever seen. I've been to a few fights where the Polish fans are turning out in the States to see Andrew Galata, and there were more fights in the men's room than there were in the ring on a lot of those cards, and these guys it couldn't have been any more of role models for how to perform at a sporting event. The fans here were sensational tonight. Here are the results. One vote for Cunningham. We can make that out. Charles Dwyer scores the spout. 119 to 109 for Cunningham. American judge, big for Cunningham. 116 to 112 for the Judge Wolfrey Bullock scores the spout. 116 to 112 for Split decision coming. And then you have the declaration of the winner, Glenn, and you know what this feeling's all about. After the American judge gave the score to Cunningham, 119-109, perhaps a little bit out of whack with our scoring, and I think we both had Cunningham the winner. Two judges, 116-112, 115-113 for Christoph Lodarczyk, and he is the new IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, it's a close fight either way. I believe the other guy won it. Steve uh, won the fight. But, you know, a fight like this, you really can't argue either way. It's a close fight. The guy is fighting is in hometown. He keep the crowd involved, and um, you know the, the judges get influenced by that. Well, they say in football you get three points for the home field advantage if the two teams are even, and I think Vladarchek might have gotten three points on the scorecards yeah, for certainly. fighting in his hometown on this one. As you said, I, I don't know that there'll be any crisis over this one or any controversy. But Steve U.S.S. Cunningham, if he felt like he got 